Gardevoir is a deck that many wrote off before rotation, but the deck has continued to persist despite that. Gardevoir has fetched some commendable results, including a top 8 at the Singapore Regional League Volume 3, and a third place finish at Orlando Regional Championships. Needing little introduction, Gardevoir EX has become a pretty iconic energy accelerating Stage 2 EX Pokemon. In the new standard format, your strategy is to use Psychic Embrace to power up your various Psychic Pokemon with Gardevoir EX to swing for big damage. Your main attackers require damage counters to be placed on them, and Gardevoir's ability is what's used to do that. This deck hangs onto its previous identity. You spend the game presenting single prize Pokemon such as Drifloon and Screamtail, you attach HP boosting tools to give them more HP and allow for more damage counters to be placed on them, thereby extending their ability to knock out Pokemon with higher and higher amounts of HP, threatening even the likes of Charizard EX. Combine this potent attack strategy with a deck that draws cards with Refinement Curlier, and you've got a perfectly serviceable archetype for the new 2024 standard metagame. Some key Pokemon include a maxed out set of routes, including at least one memory skip routes to help stall an opponent out in certain situations. You have a play set of Refinement Curlier, which is your main draw power and pathway into Gardevoir EX, your energy accelerator and main engine. Without Gardevoir EX in play, you cannot start powering up to take prizes, so it is very important. There's a, a few attackers at your disposal, but the main two are Screamtail and Drifloon. Drifloon can dole out extreme amounts of damage to the active Pokemon, whilst Screamtail can take KOs on the bench should they fail to put Manaphy into play. HP boosting tools are needed to reach those important damage numbers, but more on that later. Your trainer engine is pretty straightforward. Arvin helps you at all points in the game to set up early and find the right cards later. Iono is here to refresh your hand, as well as disrupt your opponent in the late game. You've got these items to help you set up, Super Rod to recover your attackers, boss and counter catcher to target an opponent's benched Pokemon. Something that sets this deck apart from many others in format is its range of tools which form a significant part of the deck. HP boosting tools including Hero's Cape, your ace spec, are there to be used with your attackers. The more HP they have, the more damage counters which can be placed on them. You also have two technical machine evolution to get your Curlia into play ASAP. These tools are all searchable via Arvin and your two town store. As for your energy count, you've got nine psychic energy. An ample amount is needed to ensure that you can consistently hit the number needed in your discard pile for use with psychic embrace to reach the damage numbers needed. In the early game, you've got two main goals. You've got a get multiple Curlia set up and get the number of Psychic Energy needed for the matchup into your discard pile. Six Energy in the discard pile will typically be enough for pretty much any matchup. When you're ready to attack, start by putting a Gardevoir EX into play and then start leveraging Drifloon and Screamtail with tools attached to knock out your opponent's Pokemon. You continually present a difficult board for your opponent to deal with. Your opponent has to choose between knocking out your Gardevoir EX or dealing with your attacker. Try to favor Bravery Charm and Hero's Cape earlier in the game until you've got the prize advantage, at which point you can start using Luxurious Cape, depending on what the prize trade scenario looks like. The mid to late game of this deck, like many, is a matter of taking prizes while stopping your opponent from achieving their win condition. You can do this by using cards like Countercatcher to target a consistency Pokemon like Pidgeot and Bibarel, and then use Iono to put your opponent at very few cards to work with. Ideally, your opponent has at least two prizes to take, so your opponent can't win without a card like Boss's Orders. Other late game lines might include, once again, using Countercatcher and Iono, but additionally, you might want to drag up a Pokemon that can't attack or retreat easily and then attack their bench instead with Screamtail if possible. Finally, you have a Professor Turo scenario to help deny a two prize knockout. Use Turo to remove a Gardevoir REX, but also make sure you have at least one or two ways to put Gardevoir back into play on the following turn. Because of the nature of this deck, it's up to you to decide what tech cards to include. Klefki and Fluttermane each have fantastic ability locking effects, and Mew EX gives you an extra way to beat Charizard EX by way of using genome hacking. 
amongst other uses for this attack as well. So there you have it, Gardevoir, although weaker than its previous iteration, still stands pretty strong as a tournament viable contender. Single prize attacking Pokemon backed up by a powerful energy accelerator in Gardevoir EX. The strategy and power of this deck is pretty simple to understand and frees you up to play the board and leverage some of the more fundamental concepts of prize trading. That is, taking two prize knockouts with a single prize Pokemon in order to succeed. I'm going to leave you with some sample gameplay, but before that, I'd like to ask you to help me out. If you're enjoying these videos or find them valuable, be sure to let me know in the comments. Maybe hit like or even subscribe if you're feeling generous, and I'll see you in the next live stream or video. So take care and goodbye. Cheers. That's all right. No, I think it's like kind of my fault for starting so early. I'm I'm not like a a streamer that streams for like a, a super long time. So like while it's nice to start early-ish, um, I think what I shouldn't have done was started like really really early. Boom. All right. Maybe we'll have a good game to finish it off. Now, Dunsparce is slightly worrisome because this suggests either Tusk Mill, which would be hype, but more often than not, it suggests Roaring Moon. So now that we know that we're playing this matchup, we're in for like a pretty tough game. We need to sort of hunker down and, and just try and work it out. They might just knock us out on this first turn, too. You just played against it? Sucks. It can be tough. It can be tough. Yeah. Let's get this game on the books, and then we'll... We'll wrap things up. Let's try and make this a good one, though. I don't want to... No, no, that's not what I wanted. No. Oh, that's, that's rude. That's a rude, KJ. Rude, but I approve. Rude, but I approve. Do it like this. Boom. Boom, boom. Actually, I think I should have concealed cars first, but it's like, it's a very minor thing. Double oven. Double Arvin, what does it mean? Okay, so we gotta do this. Do this. Refine. I'll get rid of one of them. Alright, we're big chilling. We're bing chilling. Evolution. One, two. Boom. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna finish this quickly because my house is a mess and I can't let tubers see my house be a mess. So I gotta, I gotta get this done.
You did my dishes? All right. This is tough. You can never really keep a Dunsparce deck out of the game when they've got three Dunsparce in play. That's... That's tough. I don't like that. That's tough. That's alright. We ball. Give me Airy. I want Airy in this hand. Give me Airy. So we definitely just need to knock out the thing in front of us. There's also like a line that we could take where if Screamtail wasn't prized, which I believe it is, we could go counter catcher the Greninja and then attack around the roaring the the roaring moon, but I think we're better off just attacking the thing in front of us. Like, don't don't try and overcook it. There's like a world where we could like, um, there is Arvin for heavy ball. Heavy ball gets scream tail, put it down, and then we do a bunch of stuff. But I think this is okay as well. Just just do the simpler thing. Don't overcook it. Balloon blast. Here we go. Here we go. Five to four. If they just hit us with the boss's orders, knock out on Gardevoir, that would be a bit sad, but... Let's see how we go. This is going to be a pretty tight game. We have to only knock out Roaring Moon for the whole game. Be really nice if they put in a two prizer, but ain't no way. No Sada. Guidance. That could get them an energy, but I think what they really want to do is get a bunch of e extra energy into play, right? That is the type of play that looks like they probably got everything they needed. If they're not attaching to this, then I'd be really surprised. Okay. So the thing I want to do on this turn now, I need to double check Sada as well. It's like to any of your Pokemon, it doesn't have to be benched, right? Yeah. So I could go for the play that I mentioned before. And I think I'm inclined to. Uh, so we go Arvin. Wow. So Heavy Ball is also prized. Uh-oh. Arvin also prized. Cringe. That would have been a really good hand to Iono, but... Eek. Yeah. Sorry. Right. We're chilling, KJ. Don't worry about it. We are chilling. 
But eventually, they're going to get a turn where they just knock out our Guard of REX, and we're going to be like, oh. Well, that kind of blows. What I need is a turn where I can Turo our Guardy. Any, any Turos? Any Turos? Where is the TM? Any Turos? Okay. So, like, maybe I could have powered up this Drift Loon, but... It's kind of pointless if I can't do all three. Okay. So there's the Heavy Ball. Heavy Ball gives us the Scream Tail. So, like, maybe next turn we get to pull off the, the maneuver that I want, which is... Counter Catcher Greninja force them to the active, so they've got to attach an energy, and if they don't get an energy down onto the Roaring Moon, uh, okay, so, like, maybe they're able to attack Roaring Moon this turn, but next turn, that, that's where the drama starts. Right. Um, especially if they whiff? Yeah, ain't no way. <laughs> if they don't put down another Roaring Moon this turn, oh, that's trouble. That's trouble. So let's see. Let's see what happens. Got the Heavy Ball. I've got Iono. I've got Counter Catcher. And I've got Brave Charm. So I've got everything that I need to make it happen. Even this, like seeing the Booster Capture will come down, that's fine because we've got 5 energy to work with. So it's going to be a, a little bit spooky. It will be. Silly bird. All right. Does that have to be on the bench to use Hyper Blow? It does. Okay, strat time. It's time for the strat. Counter catcher. You. Heavy Ball, for you, what's in here? You, you, Town Store, so that they can't easily replace the Roaring Moon. Put this down. Let's put everything into position first. So I'm very committed to this line, as you can see. Um, yeah, we'll just do it. Okay, very nice. Embrace. So this will be 200. Now, their board is very playable, regardless of what we do, because of the three Dunsparce. But we're going to try and do something to get back into this game. And this is, this is about as good as it gets. This is about as good as it gets. I should probably progress the hand a little bit, too. Okay. I'm not going to go all the way. I'm going to keep one Psychic Energy, just in case shenanigans happen. Um, but I think this is okay. So, Scream. Yes. That's 200. Oh, go for the Greninja later? I didn't even think about that. That's a, that's a really good, um, a really good idea, Lincoln. I didn't even think about that, but, uh, yeah. Smart idea. Now... 
you know, like they can't clear the bundle without, um, without getting it to the bench. So they can only attack, they can only play down the one Roaring Moon. They got a Dun Sparse down, so, you know, very feasible for them to manufacture what they need. They did use this, though, and so that means there's not going to be a Sada this turn. And we've seen three Dark Patch. So they may not attack this turn. So we might, we might get back to parity here. And if they don't put the Iron Bundle to the bench, uh... Yeah, it could be could be really annoying for them. We'll see. If they don't attack this turn, two row, uh oh, two row. If there's no attack, uh oh. If they attack, sad. Sad. This could be a great game. But we'll see. Bundle in the active. Not great for them. Not great. Oh! Okay. Do I, I owner them again? Wait, I'm thinking Turo on this turn. I'm thinking Turo is what I need to do. I think Turo is what I need to do. I'm also going to do this so that I've got a uh, Drifloon ready to go. Right, just in case. I want to keep an energy still in case this gets dragged active. We do this. Put it back in hand. Put this back down. And then we'll see. Now, what do I knock out? It's probably just a Duns Pass. I don't really care if they draw cards with Greninja. I care more about the Dunsparce. And any energy that enters their hand, they've got to seriously consider whether they need it in order to attach to Roaring Moon. So speaking of which, here it is. Now will this be... Will this be enough, is the question. So there's Dunsparce, and that means that the genome hacking dream is probably gone. Unless they do just put another Dunsparce down. Okay. Dunsparce? Ooh... So maybe, maybe, ooh, ooh, this could be it. This could be it. Okay, I need to check the deck. Let's check. There's Mew. There's boss, there's counter catcher. Done. GG's. We finally broke the loss streak. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Feels good. Finally got there. Oh. That matchup is horrendous. <laughs> but. But. If you hold on, if you hold on, you can get there. 
If you just believe in yourself. Oh my gosh. Alright. Genome hacking. Yep. Mulei Shuriken. Get the double. I didn't even think about the genome hacking play. Oh. Hey, we got the 